Isn't it lovely when someone has taken a little bit extra effort to make something look nice? <laughs> yeah, it is. But you know what's even lovelier? Taking the time to be that person. Roll it! Hey home bakers, this week something a little bit different. Get some bread dough on, I'll leave the recipe in the description for you. And take the opportunity to exercise your right to play. I bet you'll find that the fancy bread roll shapes that follow aren't as tricky as you may initially think. And in fact, they're all based upon a few universal shaping techniques. So I'm not sure I need to, but I'll talk you through them all individually so that, you know, we all learn something. Cut to the table. The first thing you need to do after your dough is puffed up is divide it up into 10 pieces, roughly working out 85 grams a piece. Then roll them into balls. And once you have all of those ready to go, rest them up under a cloth for 10 minutes or so to make the shaping easier. While you're waiting, get some stuff out that you might want to play with. Get yourself a couple of trays ready to go lined with parchment paper. Couple of dough scrapers, big ones and small ones as you see fit and a spritzer gun of water. It's always a nice idea. Small serrated knife is useful for the pre-puff slash and a pair of scissors should you like to snip anything. Have a rummage in your cupboard for any kind of seeds or semolina that you might like. And a tray with a J cloth is always a good idea, isn't it? For sticking seeds on. Mm, top secret. Spritz it liberally with water and let that J cloth soak for later. What else can we find? A rolling pin? A cup of coffee is essential. Just have a look about. Have a little rummage around and see what you can find. Let your imagination go wild. Circle pastry cutters? Mm, no, not today. Whisk? Well, I don't know, maybe. Think about it. Now that your dough is rested for 10 minutes, it'll be much more forgiving to the kind of shapes you want to make. Make sure you've got plenty of space to play and have a little light dusting of your side. This first one I flipped upside down, pressed kind of flat with my fingertips, and now the classic roll push technique to make it into kind of a baguette shape, I suppose, or a ficelle. Roll it long using some pressure from the sides of your hands to point the ends in an attractive manner, and then transfer it onto your wet J-cloth. Roll it around to moisten it all over before transferring it back to another tray that you've put some flour inside. Using a bit of water here to stick the flour onto the outside of the bread dough instead of just dusting it will encourage the flour to stick onto the dough and keep that nice definition after you've baked it between the white bit and the brown bit that you've cut. Get your lovely bread back on the table and get rid of that flour and then with a small, smoothly serrated knife, you're gonna score from one end to the other. And then crinkle up your dough artistically into some kind of wavy shape like this. Transfer it onto your tray and when it's puffy, bake it and it will look like this afterwards. Isn't that lovely? We've kept the definition of the brown and the white. That's what I was talking about earlier. Create something rather special. Hmm. Next up, the rolling pin. Once you start playing with rolling pins, you can make loads of stuff. I'll show you. This one I've dusted top and bottom. I'm just going to press this quite narrow rolling pin one way and then the other way to make a kind of X-shaped dent in the middle. Now upside down onto my J cloth, give it a little pat to moisten it on the top. Transfer again into the poppy seeds this time. Those plump edges will pick up the poppy seeds, leaving the middle uh, empty, which is quite nice, isn't it? Again, let it puff up and bake it and it looks something like this. And you can do the same thing with sesame seeds as well, or whatever other seeds that you like to use. You go crazy. Third one, you've just seen a variation of this on the channel before. Press it down flat, roll it back up into that kind of ficelle baguette shape we had earlier with pointed ends. Moisten it nicely on a cloth, and this time I'm gonna dunk it into the sesame seeds. From the sesame seeds, straight onto a lined tray. Get yourself a pair of scissors and snip it at an angle, almost all the way through, but not quite, turning each segment one way and the other and the other for a lovely sesame encrusted epi. This one puffs up before it bakes as well, but before we see the finished thing, let's see another variation. This time, I'm doing exactly the same thing, only rolling it in the poppy seeds for a different look. And then at the tray, I'm gonna snip it exactly the same, only this time turning the segments the same way as one another. Now from the tip, I'll pull it around like this, rest that end upon the base and make a nice little circle. A ring, a wreath, if you will, let it puff up and bake it, and they look like this. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, man, nice one. This one I'm shaping pretty much exactly the same way. I'm rolling it up into that ficelle shape, but this time rolling it really long with my palms. When you're doing stuff like this, it's essential. There's not loads of flour everywhere that you can see 
in the pitcher. You need some grip on the table to get it long. If there's too much flour, it'll just slide up and down. If there's not enough, it'll just stick. Grip lies somewhere between stick and slide. Just enough flour, not too much. Roll it really long like this. It's probably about 40 centimeters or so, and I've left that middle nice and plump. Now I'll grab on each end, I'll twist it all up like this, and it twists itself nicely. A few more twisties to wrap up that wide end, and I'm gonna curl the other bit underneath. Let's do another one, this time rolling not as long as that one, possibly 25 centimeters. A little twist like that is all we need. Remove the flour from the table so I can roll the ends into a point together. Isn't that nice? Puff it, bake it, and it looks something like this. How's that for a fancy bread roll when you do the table? Hmm? Pretty good, huh? The rolling pin is back for the next one. Dust the top and the bottom and push it firmly into the middle. Then, with your fingers and thumb, Pull out those middle edges and twist them up into a point. Up, turn it onto your wet J-cloth line tray and then pop it into the seeds. This time we get this kind of lemon shape with an empty slice down the middle, isn't that cool? Yeah, I like it. Once it's puffed and baked, it looks like this. Easy peasy, right? Just a little dent of a rolling pin, easy. This next technique is a little bit of fun with a rolling pin. If you take a round roll and dust it liberally top and bottom because it will stick after you've rolled it and then quite firmly roll out the top half, leaving the bottom half, plump. Fold that thin flap over the plump edge and spritz the top. Dust it liberally so the final uh, bread gets a nice contrast like we did before. And then I'm going to use the side of my dough scraper to snip a triangle in the middle. So this way we've got kind of three triangles when you open it up. Then again with a serrated knife make three little cuts, a little slice on each point and arrange it on your tray nicely. I'm gonna do the next one exactly the same, only this time I'm gonna moisten that bit after I've rolled it, dip it in my seed so we get a kind of folded in layer of poppy seeds. Cut it exactly the same, score the top exactly the same, and after it's puffed up and baked, they both look like this. That's quite fancy, isn't it? With that technique, you can take it wherever you like. You can just cut in half down the middle, don't cut in half at all, just score the top. It's quite nice, I like it. Use your imagination, you get a lot out of a rolling pin once you start playing a rolling pin and dough. Promise. Before we carry on, don't forget that you can sign up for your Home Baker's Bulletin, which is a weekly email I drop in your inbox every single week with all my content from the week. Should you feel like you're missing out on some stuff, also put like recipes in there and bits and bobs from Instagram as well, if you're interested. Sign up, link underneath. And the rolling pin is back, and this time we're gonna take a roll that we did earlier and take it to another level by pushing in three lines quite firmly, one in the center and one either side. This way we get three dents and four bumps. Isn't that cool? Squeeze up the edges like this all together and we get a kind of corrugated version of what we made earlier. Moisten it on your J cloth, dip it in the seeds and have a look at that. I like this one. Yeah, easy peasy lemon squeezy after baking. Looks like this. This one's spread a little bit further than I was expecting. Possibly left it a little bit too long, but hey, if it looks like that when I've left it a little bit too long, imagine if I caught it five minutes earlier. Probably much more plumper. Mm. The next shape is slightly different in that I left the ball to prove up a little bit, get nice and puffy, because this one, we're not gonna puff it up after it's shaped. And it's the classic, you've seen it before, Fugas. I really like a Fugas on a small scale like this. Just imagine it on the side of your plate. Perfect for dipping into a baked cheese, for example. I'm gonna push it out flat with my fingers gently, retaining that air inside. With a short edge of my dough scraper, I'm gonna cut some holes in it, starting in the middle and two either side. Then with the edge, just snip a couple of spikes around it, stretch it out nice and big, exaggerating those holes because they'll close up when you bake them otherwise. This first one I'm doing au naturel and the second one we're gonna dip in the poppy seeds for visual effect that's really quite wicked. This time instead of proving up on a tray, we're gonna fling it straight onto a hot stone in the oven where it's gonna bake until I'm happy with the color. 12, 15 minutes probably. When it comes out, it's nice and crispy and just look at these shapes. Aren't they lovely? In amongst everything in your bread basket, these are really gonna shine. And put a little bit of a professional looking artisan sprinkle on your bread basket. Mm. I like this next one. Keeping it loose, what we're gonna do is press it down the same as before. And then roll it up into that kind of baguette shape, but this time not going too tight. I'll we'll flat it down here with my fingertips and then with my palms, roll those ends into a point. Get our flat side onto your J cloth 
and then back into the seeds with a little bit of dust underneath to make sure nothing sticks. Take the short edge of your dough scraper and make two cuts down the middle, just off diagonal. Open up your cuts nice and big and place it on your parchment lined tray where it will puff up before baking. And here's what it looks like after. When your rolls are done, don't just leave them in a pile on your tray because like I always say, and like you've heard me say before, effort is always rewarded. It's like in a restaurant when a waiter brings your food and you're all like, wow, that wow is present because of the time and attention the chef took in plating your dinner, the effort he or she put in. At the time, you may not consciously recognize where that wow came from, but something inside of you clocked it and appreciated it. I promise you, I promise. That's the rules, I don't make the rules. So get something nice off your shelf or out of your cupboard, a wooden board, a massive decorative plate, a pigeon gray enamel tin like this, and build some kind of lovely display to secretly celebrate your efforts to yourself and to bring others the joy of the subconscious wow. <laughs> nice one. Thank you all for being here, through thick and through thin, and have fun with these bread shapes. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>